Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, we're gonna follow up on a story. A story I was yapping away about a couple of months ago. And a story that you guys, since recent events, have sent me about a thousand messages on, uh, so... Thanks. The Murdochs. Yeah, that one. In this old one, let me start by giving you a wee recap of previous events, filling in some gaps, and then talking about the eventful times since. Especially recently. Recently being September 2021. When, you know, without pointing fingers, we're starting to see some traits similar to other cases we've talked about. And maybe the mystery is becoming a little less foggy. I mean, it was definitely already crazy to me anyway. Uh, bizarre, weird, and then it gets even better. Not better, but you know what I mean. Because if this was a book, it would be unbelievable. Kind of unbelievable in real life too. Some parts for sure. Let's give it a go. So this, uh, well, you know, let's just uh, first get up to speed about the rich, powerful, lawyer -y Murdoch family down in, or up in, you tell me, South Carolina. Okay, so we know the basics, right? Set in Hampton County, and specifically Islington. Though Islington and Moselle Road are actually in Colton County, they're close to the border of Hampton. Rural low country. Wet, swampy, yep, great, oh, I'm loving it. The Murdochs have been around for gosh darn over a century. You cut down a tree in Hampton County, you might find a Murdoch inside. Fourteen circuit solicitors. Three generations took that post until the most recent. That would be Alex Murdoch, the dad of the family. But he does work as a prosecutor part-time in that office. Part-time because, of course, there is the family law firm. Peters, Murdoch, Parker, Ellsroth, Dietrich. Pumped. The website of which is, at the time of this recording, temporarily unavailable. Hmm, interesting. Wonder if anything happened. So that's that, then you know you got the main family made up of Alex Murdoch, the dad, attorney, Maggie, Alex's wife, and together they had two sons, Buster and Paul Murdoch. Okay, so skeletons in the closet, of which there are a few, real quick. Hampton County now, one where's your emergency? Hell, uh, I just going down the wrong um, Crockettville Road. Mm -hmm. I see somebody laying out. In 2015, 19-year-old Stephen Smith was found dead in the middle of the road in Hampton County. His body was found in the wee hours of the morning and it was concluded that he had been uh, the victim of a hit and run. Didn't look that way though. Dead giveaway being he had a hole in his head. There were no car skid marks, no car debris, nothing you would usually see, you know, at the scene of a car incident. But hit and run, case closed. Stephen Smith was a young, outgoing gay man, and he was linked to Buster Murdoch via rumours during the investigation. When the case was closed, his mother, she continued to fight for what she believed was a police cover-up, and that well, the case should be reopened. This is obviously the running factor in all Murdoch cases. They're very rich, they're very powerful, they're all lawyered up, they're part of the good old boys club. Cover-ups, has there been a few? Stephen Smith, allegedly, received some threatening phone calls before he was killed in July 2015. And he also had become more secretive. Maybe somebody thought he wasn't being secretive enough. And then, sure wouldn't you know it, after the events of June 2021, six years after Stephen Smith's death, his, well, his case would be reopened. This was due to information the police recovered during their investigation into the Murdoch murders. What exactly? What exactly that information is? Don't know. All we do know is obviously the Murdochs are linked to the death of Stephen Smith. Next. Three years later, Gloria Satterfield, a beloved housekeeper to the Murdoch family, Slips and falls. My finger's gonna get sore doing it so much in this one. Whether she fell down the stairs of her own volition or not is the real question. Regardless, Alex would settle with Gloria's children, paying out half a million dollars as part 
of a wrongful death suit. I mean, they had reason to sue, and he had reason to pay, but in the documents that's come out about that suit, nothing, no more information about what exactly happened, other than sinister. What else would you say? Then of course there was the boat crash in late February 2019. Paul Murdoch and his friends were out drinking on the Murdoch family boat, and it crashed into a bridge at 1 a.m. After y'all hit the bridge, did y'all beach the boat up there on the side of the, the no, thing, or did the boat, it, that's where it, it ended up? That's that's where it ended. Okay. Do y'all think y'all hit one of the markers that, in the beginning of it? Sir. Sure. Yeah. Hey, you been checked out? My name was? What? Hey, buddy. You been checked out my name was? Yeah, I'm fine. Sure? Yeah, I'm fine. I mean, can I use your phone? Can I use your phone? You ain't got your phone on you. Can I use your phone? I don't have my phone on me, buddy. Uh, one of the young, young ladies got ejected. She's still has not been found. Uh, tide's going out. Uh, we tried to walk down the marsh. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. So we got five, six total, five accounted for. Yes, sir. Okay. Paul was driving the boat and he was shit faced drunk. One of the passengers of the boat, 19-year-old Mallory Beach, she was thrown out of the boat upon impact, and Mallory was found dead seven days later. She had drowned. And many questions still surround the death of a 19-year-old girl thrown from a boat and later found dead in Beaufort County. After what seems like, you know, with great difficulty, because uh, maybe there was pressure on the police, maybe there was a Conspiracy, hint hint, to make sure Paul didn't get any blame. He was eventually charged with three felony counts of boating under the influence. As I said, his family and connections tried very hard to make sure he didn't get charged with them, but he did. He is presumed innocent. He's pleading not guilty. He pled, pleaded not guilty, and he was awaiting trial, which could have resulted in up to 40 years in prison, and he was, of course, represented by some good old boys, friends of the family. Mallory Beach's family, the victim's family, they also brought a civil suit against Paul, Alex, and Buster, and also the people who served the underage Murdoch and co. alcohol. The criminal charges against Paul were obviously uh, later dropped when, three days before a court hearing about that case, this happened. On the 7th of June 2021, Alex Murdoch found his son Paul and wife Maggie shot to death at the house on Moselle Road. He called 911 shortly after 10 p.m. So, what do we know? Not much. They were both killed between 9 and 9.30 p.m. Both shot dead outside the house near the dog kennels. Both were killed with different guns. Paul a shotgun, 
Maggie rifle. One of those weapons was owned by the Murdochs. There were also signs of forced entry to the property. And Maggie's phone was discovered the next day along a rural road. Also, Paul Murdoch had received death threats leading up to this, un un indubitably related to the boat crash. And before we get to the rest, Alex Murdoch, the dad, he was the one who found him, called 911. He was confirmed to, he had a, he had a, a rock solid alibi. He was in hospital with his dad who was dying. I don't know of anybody no. that would truly, that would truly be an enemy or truly want to harm them. Obviously there are some mistakes made and some things that, but the people themselves are, they're great. They care about the community. They really do. Since then, the police released jack shit. No real press conferences even. The Murdar family has announced a $100,000 reward for information leading to an arrest in the killing of 22-year-old Paul Murdaugh and his 52-year-old mother Maggie. To be eligible for this reward, you must submit information to the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division or to Crime Stoppers of the Low Country by September 30th, and that information must lead to an arrest. Then in August, the 14th Circuit Solicitor a position the, you know, the Murdochs historically took until 2005. Now the position is owned by a guy named Duffy Stone, of course a friend of the Murdochs. And he recused himself from the investigation into the double homicide. Why would the, essentially the county prosecutor, not, you know, uh, be, want to be in charge of that investigation? Well, he recused himself because he said there was a conflict of interest. Left it at that person usually responsible for prosecuting these cases in the low country has stepped aside citing conflicts. 14th Circuit Solicitor Duffy Stone officially recused himself from the case just last week. He used to work under former solicitor Randolph Murdoch and with Alec Murdoch, Maggie's husband in the past. Now Stone says those relationships though had nothing to do with his decision. I knew that there was a, an ethical issue and I needed advice on it. I got that advice and I followed the advice. There was something that changed before you sent that letter to that's the correct. General's office. That's correct. It's something you can't talk about. And I cannot tell you what it is. So if I asked you, does it have anything to do with the suspect in the case? I wouldn't tell you. How complicated is this case? The event happened, what, two months ago? Nobody's been arrested? That should answer your question. And after that, things went quiet. Like, weirdly, well, actually, let me scratch that. They haven't gone quiet at all in some aspects. But in the aspects I'm talking about, they've been dead quiet. The police haven't released anything, and I mean anything. No clues, suspects, updates on the investigation, jack shit, sweet F all. It's almost all rumors to date about how it's progressing. And what happened? The police have even fought public record requests. They don't want any shit leaking. Because it goes deep is the only thing I can think of. So this brings us up to the most recent incident, incidents involving Alex Murdoch. On Friday, the 3rd of September 2021, Alex Murdoch resigned from his position at the Pumped Law Firm. I say resigned, what I mean by that is he was pushed out of the family law firm. Several new twists in the Murdoch murder mystery. Why was he pushed out of a powerful established law firm? that had his name on it, misuse of funds. Nice way of saying theft. One unnamed member of the firm said it was in the millions of dollars. Okay, interesting. And then the next day, on the 4th of September, a Saturday, so the day after he resigned, he was driving from the lodge on Moselle Road to Charleston, taking a very strange route, by the way, like way out of his way. As you can see here, and at about 1.30 p.m., he pulled over on Old Salkahatchee Road to change a tire. What happened next was, um, well, uh, as he was pulled over on the side of the road, changing a tire, another car drove by him, a pickup truck, drove by him, did a Yui, and then opened up on him. He was shot at and shot, and suffered a, just very luckily, a superficial head wound. A bullet grazed his noggin. Tonight in South Carolina, murder mystery taking an unexpected turn. He was airlifted to hospital, was conscious and speaking. So who would shoot at him? You know, as he was just pulled over inside of the road, 
Minding his own business? Changing a tire. Well, the police yard requested anybody see anything, hear anything, let them know, and they processed the scene. But just, you know, off the dome here. I wonder if the person who shot at Alex, if their name began with Alex, who can say? What's weird is that the Merc Alex drove was equipped with extended mobility tires, as in it's unlikely he would be changing a tire on the side of the road. Most Merc SUVs also don't come with spare tires as they have run flats. And then also, uh, authorities said that when they arrived upon the scene, they found one of Alec Murdoch's tires was sliced, not like punctured. Oh yeah, and then the police recovered the knife that had been used to puncture the tire of Alex's car. The knife was owned by... you guessed it. Almost as if someone was staging something. And then, it gets even better! Uh, while in hospital, Alex Murdoch released a statement. Here goes. The murders of my wife and son have caused an incredibly difficult time in my life. I have made a lot of decisions that I truly regret. I'm resigning from my law firm and entering rehab after a long battle that has been exacerbated by these murders. I am immensely sorry to everyone I've hurt, including my family, friends, and colleagues. I ask for prayers as I rehabilitate myself and my relationships. You'll notice he doesn't mention being shot at. Attorney Alex Murdaugh is now recovering after being shot over the weekend. And now SLED is investigating and Alex Murdaugh says he is entering rehab. The state Supreme Court today is suspending his law license amid allegations he misused funds from his law firm and the local solicitor's office sending him a letter saying, quote, after the events this weekend, when some of the accusations had taken place at the firm and he entered into rehab, we will no longer be authorized to volunteer his services as a prosecutor. And there's, there's a lot more to the story, too. So he was stealing from his workplace, we can guess, using that money to fund his drug habit. In fact, maybe he wasn't just misappropriating you know, funds from Pumped. Uh, this you can take with a pinch of salt. Maggie, his wife, shortly before her murder, she allegedly hired a forensic, you know, accountant to go through the family funds. Maybe she thought there was something hinky going on with the family accounts. So I don't want to be, you know, libelous or theorize too much. There's going to be a question mark on everything I say here. But it's interesting, you can say, that his son, who's going to be involved in a civil lawsuit and probably be sued for a shitload of money at the very least in the wrongful death suit. And hey, Alex himself was part of that wrongful death suit, so that's a lot of money gone. And then there was also his wife, who wanted to go through the family finances with a fine tooth comb. Well, both of them get killed. Then the husband, who has an alibi, three months later he is fired for stealing millions apparently to fund a drug habit. Then, the very next day, he is shot at by a, quote, pickup truck, unquote. Which just all sounds like bullshit. Then he gets a graze and goes into rehab for an opioid addiction. Now, the fact that Alex is an addict is new, at least uh, publicly. Because what's also interesting about that is that in July 2021, there was a huge drugs bust in Hampton County. On the 23rd of July 2021, the results of Operation Pentagon were announced, with at least 18 people arrested for distributing, well, drugs. Namely, heroin, fentanyl, meth, coke, and crack. Man, where this case stretches. And the influential family turns out Alex was under the influence. This case is a big one. It's gonna get even bigger, I have no doubt. Uh, I mean, I said that last time, and I'll say it again. In the meantime, there's still so much speculation, obviously. I mean, I think part of it is fueled by the fact that the police have released so little. We have nothing to go on, so everybody's kind of pulling shit out of their ass. But, obviously the question is, is there some people out to get the Murdochs? Or, uh, you know, not? Suspicion about Alex Murdoch has skyrocketed, I mean, obviously. Yes, yes, he had an alibi for the double homicide of his wife and son, but he still has remained a person of interest. And his story about being shot in the head is, is dubious at best. And then you're like, whoa, on top of that, great timing. The day after you were forced to resign for misappropriating millions of dollars, and then two days before you entered rehab, where you could essentially just avoid everybody and don't have to answer. 
things are certainly becoming clearer, though, uh, I think, when you mix drugs, money, a good old boys network, and murder. Let's see where this takes us next. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to do so. Uh, go on. I'll see you as always real soon in the next old video. Uh, until then, please take care of yourselves. I love you. Mike out.